what is up party people it's your boy dh coming back at you with another video and some of you guys might have seen my shorts uh kind of talking about documenting my journey um i was talking about uh you know with what i have to go through on an everyday basis with sickle cell and so let's call this video episode one so ah, as you can see i'm just sitting here chilling in my room um and in this first video, I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about like, not necessarily the origins of it, but just the origin of my struggle with it and some of the issues it's caused me. So uh, let me start with, you know, so I was born in 1994 and I was born in Columbus, Georgia at the medical center. Uh, shout out to Dr. Perry, who was my pediatrician. And actually what happened was my mom has what's called the sickle cell trait my dad had what was called the thalassemia now he unfortunately is deceased but at the time uh at the time he was unaware of having the sickle cell uh thalassemia um my mom was completely aware that she had the sickle cell trait so about maybe four months into the pregnancy, maybe five, uh, Dr. Perry called both of my parents to the office and she said, I saw something in, you know, the initial blood work and I just want to make sure everything is OK. Uh, so she took their blood again and proceeded to do. I think six or seven tests back to back and uh, they all came out with the same conclusion of sickle cell which immediately sent my mom and dad to the library trying to find out everything they could about this disease because even though they both had like, you know, the jumping off points or the beginning points of the disease, nobody on nobody in the family on either side has it until me. And still to this very day. So that sent them to the library because obviously, you know, you couldn't just like Google it on your phone at that time. And there was... You know, the research back then was spotty at best. You know what I mean? And I mean, because they told my mom, basically, by the time I was born, you know, I, by six years old, 10 at an absolute maximum, I would have been dead. You know what I mean? So I think whatever it is, it's been watching me all this time because I'm 27 now. And so to kind of set up the beginning there you guys might remember in biology you had to do uh punnett squares which kind of showed you know dominant and recessive genes and stuff like that and so with sickle cell with the trait and the thalassemia what happened was my mom had the trait like i said dad thalassemia so what happened was there was four options in particular of what could have happened so option number one is that i would have had the trait like my mother has option two is i would have gotten the thalassemia like my father had option three is that i would have been completely fine wouldn't have gotten either one of those and would be completely normal regular blood cells and everything and then option four is that because those two opposites mixed i would get the full disease of sickle cell anemia and I guess I just got lucky. So I also am the only child, you know, my parents don't have any other kids, not together. And uh, so it really was like a like a one in 100 kind of thing. And I just happened to get it. So uh, when you are a baby, you have this thing called fetal hemoglobin, it's basically a chemical in the blood that kind of keeps your blood from sticking keeps your blood cells uh the viscosity is not as thick and they are less likely to stick to each other when you turn one years old that goes away you lose that and so what happened was literally on my birthday in 1995 a year to the day my mom told me i had my very first crisis in which case my hands my feet and my head started to swell and I was crying profusely. She didn't know what was wrong. So I was having my first sickle cell crisis. So basically what a crisis is, is your 
So think about this. You have arteries, you have veins, you have capillaries, right? And the arteries, you know, are huge, you know, the veins, standard size, and your capillaries are very small, right? And then, you know, when you drink caffeine or when you're cold, those veins all start to constrict. Well, a normal blood cell, because it has 100% oxygen, <clears throat> it can bend and contort itself into any shape it needs to, as if it worked in the Cirque du Soleil. It can contort to any shape it needs to, to make sure it gets through even the smallest capillary to oxygenate every part of your body and every organ. Well, the sickle cells literally are missing 75% of that oxygen. So, real quick, normal blood cells lifespan is about three months. A sickle cell only can live for about three weeks before it dies. So my bone marrow is constantly working overtime, constantly working overtime just to provide enough blood to keep me alive and, and functioning to be able to think, move everything. So <clears throat> now think about what I was saying about the veins. If your blood vessels are constricting and then you already got the capillaries, which are small, those sickle cells come along and they can't they can't bend because they only have 25 percent oxygen and not to mention they're very rigid they're they're almost sharp on the end and they scratch against the wall and they can't bend and they get stuck then other sickle cells come in and they're like oh hey we're just hanging out boom and they start to stick to each other they start to scratch against the vein wall next thing you know you have like a traffic jam of red sickle cells. And it's not really a blood clot, but essentially that's what's happening. A bunch of blood cells are stuck in one area. <clears throat> now, what that does is it causes the blood cells or the blood trying to get to the heart to be reoxygenated can't get through because it's a traffic jam. The blood coming from the heart trying to get there and provide oxygen can't get through because it's a traffic jam. So you're not getting oxygen to that particular part of the body and it causes excruciating pain. Uh, and in my case, I have beta zero thalassemia. And in my case, the pain got worse as I aged. The crises were. Uh, the crises were more frequent when I was a child, but the pain wasn't as bad. And then when I got older, they became further and further apart. But the pain was far more severe. And, you know, that's what a sickle cell crisis is. So in part two, I'll share kind of some of the stuff that I've had happen to me, you know, in my experience with it. Uh, so be on the lookout for part two. Uh, document my journey of this whole thing with sickle cell. Um, you know, if you have sickle cell, please, by all means, comment. Share your struggle with me because... Sometimes it does make you feel like you're alone, you know, and I'm doing this so everybody with it and even people who are not suffering from it can be aware. And just if you know somebody who does have it, just make sure they're OK, you know. Please subscribe, like the video, share, you know, and uh, be on the lookout for part two. Love.